Hey, everybody, Reverend Rob here. Stick around. I've got Laura Van Tyne. She's back. We're talking, and we're talking demons, darkness, and about your soul. So don't miss it. This is Tarot with an Attitude, featuring your host, tarot consultant and spiritual medium, the Reverend Rob Lee. Hey everybody, Reverend Rob, welcome back to Tarot with an Attitude. I am your host, tarot consultant and spiritual medium, the Reverend Rob Lee. Wow, bang right. We are back, and you know what? A good friend of mine, we had started something down the path a while ago, and things would happen, got us kind of separated apart. Nothing bad, but we just both tanked, and we think it's because of what we were trying to talk about. So, this is the Miss beautiful Miss Laura Van Tyne. She is a remote viewer, an author, and a speaker. She spent much of her life as a middle school teacher holding a BS degree in education, a BA in Spanish, and a master's in second language acquisition. So we're not talking a bunch of idiots here. So y'all bear with us, us little eggheads. We're going to go. Okay, but you'll enjoy the conversation. 20 years ago, the paranormal broke through her home and she stopped teaching to figure out how to keep her family safe. Now she helps others with similar problems. So Laura's focus is on soul health and how we create a healthy soul. The unseen energetic world, and y'all hear me talk about that a long time, impacts our soul health and it mitigates our free will. When we learn to discern the otherworldly beings and who they truly are, and where they come from, we take our power back. Wow, God, been echoing this for a while now. When we learn to connect with the light beings, we can attain wisdom, insight, and amazing help along with our karmic path. We're going to talk about the karmic path, a website that y'all need to, to embrace, but we'll get all that later. Okay, reincarnation is a part of our soul experiences. We are here to learn and discern. We all die. Hate to break that to you, but we all die. However, <laughs> rarely do we discuss what to do upon death. That is the key to soul health, wellness, sovereignty. Miss Laura, welcome. Wow. Thank you. It's so much fun to be back here with you. I've missed you, sir. I have missed you too. We had some great stuff, you know, we had started or whatnot. And I do, you know, we were going to start talking about some of the dark things, things that happened. A lot of people just want to be, oh, no, only light, you know, airy, fairy, you know, shoot rainbows out my butt, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's all. You just got to tap into Rob's butt rainbow, you know, and everything will be happy, okay? But it's not. There's more to life than this and, and everything else. So, you know, man, I'm glad we finally reconnected. Thank you. Oh, me too. Me too. I've missed you. And you know, we had some previous shows and you know, they disappeared and along with some others on my YouTube, they just, they're gone. I'm, I'm telling so, you. Yeah, I hear you. I've got a private channel I'm going to be starting up soon. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later because of that. And yeah. Yeah. It's all good, good deal. Stuff. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Make sure you look down in the comments below in the descriptions because we will have different links there for you with courses about how to protect yourself. We'll get into more of that uh, down the road as we go. And Laura and I are going to be starting another own show about some of these things about protecting your soul, healing, and the dark things that are at work. So you'll find out we'll have different names, things like that. But I want to whet your appetite that this is going to be good. We're going to have a good time. So with all that being said, Laura, let's dive into this. And I know one of the thing is, one of the questions I'll, we ask, and, and people, I don't think they know how to ask it. And I think you worded it really good here. What is the unseen energetic world and how can it impact us? Well, if we go back through time, it wasn't that long ago until the invention of the microscope that we didn't know viruses and bacteria existed, right? Correct. Okay, so technology changed the way we viewed that part of the unseen world, right? Okay. Because they're invisible to the naked eye. I'm drawing a logic trail here. Yeah, no, so you're good. Once we realized that viruses and bacteria existed, they actually travel through water. We cleaned up our water system. People got healthier, right? Right. 
and people didn't die in childbirth or women. I'm going to, I'm going to be politically incorrect. Women didn't die in childbirth as there much. There you go. I'm with you. <laughs> Not just people. Um, anyways, because. The only time I've seen a man die during childbirth is during transition and his wife choked him out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, um, we have the technologies to see these things now. And with the advent of the cell phones and cameras, we're act actually able to capture so much more that we never knew existed. All right. Well, what do we do with this information? It's not all love and light and rainbows and this, right? As you said. Correct. So the unseen energetic world can impact us in many different ways. The we have to understand the light side will not do something without our permission. Okay. It's a violation of spiritual law. We all have access to angels, but we have to ask the angels to help us. They can't just assume we want or need their help. It's a spiritual law issue. The dark side, they don't comply with spiritual law. They don't see the importance of it, the value of it. They don't believe it exists. This is a problem. So in the third dimension, the physical realm we live in, it's no different than somebody coming into my home and deciding they're going to be a squatter while I'm gone for a month, right? Gotcha. Same concept. And they're destroying my house. They're causing me, wreaking havoc on my life. That's an energetic for a, a seen energetic force. But the same thing can happen in different dimensions. And so... When we think about something like, why did I say that? Why did I react this way? Why did I get so angry? What is happening? And a lot of times it's the dark forces or even negative energies that impact us. And I work with a lot of people who are sensitive to these energies. And, you know, for those out there, the empaths, et cetera, the good news is you're sensitive. The bad news is you're sensitive, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Me said, on empaths. <laughs> oh, I know, right? <laughs> so all those empaths out there, you got to learn how to just suck it up and, you know, put your force field around you because we don't need to absorb other people's junk. All right. Correct. Yeah. It, and by the way, when we knowingly do this, we're actually harming our soul. And you know what, that, that would make sense to me knowing, you know, you, you know, I have my master's in social work, so there's a lot of counseling. I get into all the head games. Mm -hmm. One of the things I've been and screaming about is everybody wants to embrace the word empath. Okay. But then they want to sit back and go, oh, well, you just have to forgive me because I'm an empath. So I've picked up everybody else's crap. That's on you. And no, oh, totally. I'm going to hold you accountable for what comes out of your mouth. So it is, if you want to proclaim to be an empath, would you not say that it's incumbent on you to take responsibility for the gift that you're using and learn the tools to protect yourself so you don't project onto another empath? absolutely oh absolutely okay. this is the problem so these unseen energetic forces and we can call them the devil we can call them the grays the reptilians the shadow man the hat man i mean it's who's who in the spiritual zoo just like on our planet earth we've got you know the cat kingdom you know the reptiles the this the that the, it's the same thing in those other dimensions it's not just one thing and we're going to do a show on that too, because some of that I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around. So, yeah, there's a lot out there in the unseen energetic world. And the issue has been, we don't know that they're impacting us, but we're still responsible for our behaviors, period. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So how do we, how do we become responsible, accountable? How do we cross that threshold how do we get rid of them right and right. a lot of times they're standing behind us like we're marionette puppets on a string and they're controlling the show well we can clip those strings and we need to know how and that's one of the reasons why i have these courses to teach people spiritual self-defense because we don't know what we don't know everybody is here to learn everybody's here to for a purpose we all have a soul well, most of us do. There are those out there that are soulless, and that's a whole nother show. 
Okay, yeah. And that's dangerous. I do at some point. But most people listening to this show do have a soul. They are kind people. They are good people. They are struggling. Maybe they have addictions. Maybe, you know, they're having financial issues. So doing the hard work in the beginning is harder than the status quo. But once you do the harder work, it becomes easier and your life moves with flow and intention. Okay. So, and, and that makes sense. Now, here's a hard thing to talk about, or, or for me, you know, people will ask about the soul. What is a soul? Who are we? And, you know, a true atheist would be like, we don't have a soul. But, you know, one of the things I have found to, to me that helped prove the existence of a soul is what is trauma. And you're like, Rob, how can trauma? Because our head, people will come to me and be like, it's like my head's doing its own thing. Well, if that was your soul, you would be in total control of it all the time. Well, my heart hurts, so my head hurts. When you think about grief, when you think about different things, and you're in a spot you don't want to be in, but you don't know how to get out of, think about where that thought is coming from. It's not your mind. We hear it in our ears and in, 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 our, in our ear. But that's our soul recognizing odd frequencies, different, you know, and, and con Disconnects. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And we can even take it a step back even. What is the soul? Yeah. The soul is the energy that animates these physical bodies. Okay. All I right. So when we die, when we leave these physical bodies, it's just a house, housing unit for the soul. The energy that animates the body has to go somewhere, right? Right. So where does it go? Ideally, the soul energy is going to go back home to the higher realms, to heaven. Okay. 23rd Psalm, he restoreth my soul. That actually means something. It's not just, you know, some words on a on a thinly, on thin paper in a, in a book, right? Right. Gotcha. Bible. All right. So the energy that animates the soul goes somewhere. So we want it to go home. We want it to go back to the heavens, the kingdom. You know, in my house, there are many mansions. Even those evil people need to go back home. Jeffrey Epstein isn't going to go to where you and I are going to go and many other listeners, right? Because we lived different. We made different choices. All right. But when we put them back into the arms of God or source, whatever our word is for it, it cleans up our planet. Now, a person who, the soul who leaves the body that lingers as a ghost energy and a ghost is a soul also, but they're stuck between heaven and earth. Okay. It's also called the hells or limbo, lower astral, etc. The problem with this, the 23rd Psalm, he restores my soul. That does not happen as a ghost energy. Okay. Now, there are these dark entities and energies that have put pre-programmed beliefs within our human construct structures such as religions uh can be anything new age stuff whatever it is a bad person deserves to rot in hell all right now we've got a, a bad person he's committed several murders let's say and we allow him to roam free in the hells we know that ghost energy impacts our physical world all the time right right What's to stop that ghost energy from harming a living person? Okay. What's to stop that ghost energy from building his own recruits down in the lower astral? Gotcha. Now, every hierarchy, every form of government, every business, every everything has a political hierarchy to it. Every department has a recruitment team. And I'm going to share a little story here. I don't think I've shared it um, with you or for a while here, but I had a, a mom call me. And this was a number of years ago. She calls me up. She goes, I, you know, I heard you can help me, and but I'm a Christian, so I really shouldn't be talking to somebody like you. And it's like, you know, that's fair. Okay, fair. I, I, you know, she's, and she's calling me because she's desperate for a solution to a problem, but I don't know what the problem is. Her daughter goes off to college and she 
comes back home and the it's a perfect it's the perfect a middle american family middle americana family you know husband wife uh a couple of kids like three kids two girls and a boy um intact normal family but the the daughter comes back and she says mom i keep hearing these voices in my head that i need to kill my sister wow that's not normal right and so they went through the normal protocols of psychiatrists psychiatric drugs etc but the voices never went away and she was like mom these urges are getting stronger i know this isn't right i don't know what to do and so she found me through somebody who knew some whatever and so i said okay what we're going to do is i want to remote view your home to see what's happening which means I have the ability to project my consciousness to another time, space, and location to see what is happening. Now, I only do it with permission. I abide by spiritual law the, to the very best of my ability. I don't want to put my toe over the line because there's karmic consequences. So when I do this, it's not like I'm looking at your dirty laundry or the dishes in the sink. I'm looking through the ethers. <laughs> Now, there are remote viewers that can do that, and I have had the ability to do that, but that's not where I choose to practice this craft, so to speak. Right. And so I, I'm looking around, and I see these, um, I think there were three ghosts, and they were puppeting the teenage daughter. She's probably like 19, 20. And then I see a hat man behind the three ghosts and the hat man is usually a being if somebody has seen it it's standing in the corner of a house it's an observer being it's a watcher and it reports to another hierarchy of beings so i remove the ghosts and i put them in i'm going to call it a containment field and once i assured these three ghost energies they were all profound uh, professed atheists by the way which i thought was interesting right. so they got stuck and they didn't believe in god they didn't believe in hell they just thought you know you just become compost or whatever when you go so what happened was this hat man and his team basically soul napped these three ghost energies these three soul energies now they're they have been tasked with getting this girl to cause harm to another living being they're mitigating that girl's free will she doesn't know what's going on she can't see it but she can sense it she can feel it she's hearing voices but she doesn't know where they're coming from and so i crossed over those three ghosts and they were so terrified they did not want to do what they were doing but if they didn't follow the rules they would get severely punished as a soul energy. Okay. This is how the dark side can grow in their rank and numbers. So I crossed over those three ghosts and then I removed the hat man and his little entourage also. Once that was done, she never had a murderous, harmful thought again towards her sister or anyone else. And this is several years later. I still keep in contact with the family just saying, hey, how is it going? Because I need data points. Do I, it was what I do effective or not if so how i mean i'm all about a logic trail and data points right. so this is how the unseen energetic world can impact us had that girl have been brought up in a broken home or on drugs would she have been weaker and made a different choice well and you know one of the things in dealing with people that are in fact mentally ill one of the reasons i left and stopped trying to get my license here is i got tired of the government telling me what i can and can't say. yeah and, you know, there's got to be a realization of, as we open up, you know, oh, well, they're just the voices in your head. And I will take you, you can look up many people that committed heinous acts that were mentally ill, and we classified them as mentally ill. But what they were doing was like, well, they didn't just listen to the voice in their head. It's not, but they felt like if they did it, the voice would go away. Yes. So it was almost a self-survival. Now, I'm not saying cut all these people loose or do whatever, or it's a pass. <laughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. But I do see that more and more, when, and I, I got this, it, it was like crazy. You're supposed to acknowledge people's cultural differences. They teach you whole classes on it, things like this. 
and you're supposed to acknowledge their spiritual. But when you start to acknowledge somebody's spirituality and they don't conform to Baptist, Catholic, Buddhist, something that we know structurally, nobody knows what to do with it. Yeah. And and I would strongly encourage people. And I, I, I've seen what you're talking about. And one of the, I just did a gallery read uh, for about 40, 50 people in, in uh, Maine live. And one of the things I talked to, I said, you have to understand, there's more people that are in this room than just your loved ones. You know, it, it there are uh, angels there. And we talk to an angel. There are, you know, there are guides. But you have to be careful who you're looking for. And this wasn't a very popular mm -hmm. thing because yeah. other things will mimic these people. Yep. Just to get you a little wigged out and flipped out. And I, I reminded them, you, a lot of you get so concentrated on contacting this dead soul, all right, or the soul that uh, of a deceased person, you stop living your life and moving yourself forward. Mm -hmm. This becomes your sole thing. Does that make sense? Am I making it? Oh, it's perfect sense. And also, the dark realms, they, they shapeshift. They become imposters. And they may they can hear and read my thoughts and so they know that my deepest desire is to reconnect with my dad for example right and so they can create an image of my dad based on their data points and my dad will start out as like you know my dad died a number of years ago and they can start and that's just as it's a hypothetical thing but this is a true thing you know i wish i want so much i'm grieving so hard right and now my dad is like manifesting himself to me all the time. And I feel so lucky and fortunate and blessed. And I keep going on and on and on. But what I don't know is that this is not really my dad. This is some kind of shapeshifter pretending right. to be my dad. And so if you are sensitive enough to see, feel, sense these energies and something feels off. Maybe as you're looking at them through your psychic eye, they don't quite look the same. Or maybe that um, they don't quite look the same. They look or, or they don't feel the same or they're giving you a message that's not quite right. Trust your intuition. Absolutely. And by the way, there's a few ways we can vet. Um, I always, when I work with somebody or working with whatever I'm working on, I always vet, I always try to discern who or what I'm speaking to in these other realms. And it's no different than a parent sending their child off down to the park by themselves, five-year-old, to go get ice cream from an ice cream truck, right? right. You don't do that. Um, you don't let your kids spend the night in strangers' places or places. You just don't do that. So why is the spiritual realm different? Why do we blindly trust? This gets us into problems. This gives us into trouble. So we need to learn how to vet. And those courses that I have, first of all, the proceeds go back to a charity foundation to reinvest in humanity, okay? Right. Now, but I have basically spiritual self-defense classes. I'm creating a spiritual warrior class. These elements that we can use to help ourselves. And we have to really learn about discernment because we are not, we've been programmed to believe that, you know, we should just trust that an angel is an angel is an angel, right? Yep. And if I question that this angel, if I question that God is talking to me, then that that's a blasphemous thought, right? Right. No, we want you to test them. So one of the things that we can do, for example, is I can visualize myself pouring salt all over my ghost dad, okay? Okay. My DC dad. And if he shapeshifts, if he changes in any aspect, it wasn't that I wasn't good enough. It's that I dodged a bullet, right? Right. And we like to dodge bullets. We don't like when we get hit. No. <laughs> exactly. You know, And I tell people all the time, number one, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. If yeah. you're developing, I have people go, well, I think that's my dad, but what are they? What does he look like? And the first thing I tell people now, poof, you're gone. You've, you've ascended, gone over, whatever the magic words for it. 
you know, in dealing with grief, it's dead, die, death. Okay. You die. All right. Your spirit is now free. If your spirit is now free, are you going to stay as a 65 year old fat guy? Okay. Are you going to go back to that healthiest point in your life when you felt and did the best? And so like, I'm clear sentient. I don't get it, it's feelings. It's, it's male presence, female presence, different things. Mm -hmm. that I can generally tell the difference. Um, but it, it is one of those things, folks, where when you start meddling in this, there are people that will pick up and verify what you want to hear because yeah. you put that energy out there. There is an entity that is helping that, but it's not the right information. So ask your spiritual practitioner how they discern, right? Correct. Correct. How do you find out what's going on? And then what do you do with the information? You know, and, and so, you know, that leads into, into probably one of our last questions, though, and I, it's opened up so much, and you and I could talk about this for a marathon. I know, right? I, but what can someone do to create a healthier soul? That's a fantastic question. One is we need to learn how to properly address traumas and hurts. Nobody lives a mortal life scathed right right now doing the work is harder is hard but not doing the work is harder so what can we do i know that um you know i let's say i grew up with parents who were addicts or something like this and how do i how do i change my family path maybe in this lifetime i grew up and because of the way way I was raised, especially if there's incest or something going on, and I choose not to have children, or maybe I choose to have children, but I'm a hawk. I'm going to make sure they are not abused the way I was. When we can change our family patterns, break the family patterns, it's hard work. It takes a lifetime. It strengthens our soul, but it also perpetuates for in perpetuity. Okay. So those around us feel the shift and change and it gives them the power to shift and change also okay that's one aspect that we can do doing the right thing being a kind person heals the soul not being a doormat that will not heal the soul right don't let people walk all over you but it, you know you're out and about and you know we all have soul purposes and a sole purpose is why did we come here and what are we here to learn? And so let's say we've learned cer cer some people's sole purpose is just to survive childhood, right? Right. And then what? And so as we move on through life, our sole purposes can change and ebb and flow. There are some people out there who have a sole mission, meaning that they have other work to do to help humanity, to help the planet, to help the animal kingdom, et cetera. That's a different level and not everybody will have a soul mission, but that's okay. Right. So those that do have a soul mission are here to be helpful, to help guide. But, and I find this a lot and I don't want to insult people, but shamans are a dime a dozen. Um, if you're working with a shaman, do your homework or a Reiki practitioner, do your homework. How do you clear yourself between clients? How do you know you, the information you're getting to getting is from source? Ask them those questions. If they don't like you asking the questions, run. Yeah. And that I, I'm glad you're saying that. And what she's not saying is not all shamans are bad. Okay. Not all are bad. Just nope. like I say, with empaths, we have people claiming to be something they are not. Some of them believe they are because they read some gobbledygook somewhere right. and said, oh, this is what, this is why you feel bad. You're an empath. Oh, I'm an empath. So therefore, we're near an empath. It's a badge of honor now, right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's ridiculous. So folks, really, I want, if Laura and I can get you to do anything, I'm going to talk right to the audience right now. 
question anybody you are allowing to enter into your energetic space, into your soul area to answer questions. And these are not bad questions. You don't walk into an attorney's office and say, I need, you know, I'm being accused of killing somebody, you know, without going, where are you at with criminal trials? You know, oh, I've had a DUI. Well, what do you mean? You've done one DUI? Yeah, that's it. Everybody else gets to plead. You would run. All right. Right. There's nothing wrong with asking a shaman, a medium or anything. And I will tell you this. It is oh, in my gut. Someone that won't face the fact that there are other forces that can manipulate your reading, you better that's your first flag. You better give it a heads up. If anybody tells you, I just know, run. Yeah. Yo, right? What does that mean? Give me, again, data, qualifiers, <laughs> things like that. And you know, I don't, I don't need to have um, my, my legal certifications. I just know. <laughs> right. Yeah, he broke the law. <laughs> you know? Okay. <Hey. laughs> yeah, maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Who knows? You know, but that's it. So, yes, with the Reiki thing or whatnot, I don't follow traditional Reiki. You know, there are one or two symbols that I will use with my hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because if you follow what Reiki is meaning and where it came from, it's energy. Yeah. I don't have to be at your house to put my hands on your neck or shoulders or anything. Does it hurt? No. Okay. And I don't have to perform certain things. I do certain Reiki things for me. That's my brain, my body to tell me I'm connecting and I'm trying to do something different, but there's no magic in. And a lot of times, you'll, the, one of the only things you'll see me do is you'll see me do this. I'll start forming a chi ball. Okay. <laughs> but then the last thing you might see me do is the break. And that's for me. That's so I, yeah. know I'm telling my own consciousness. We're disconnecting here. I'm not taking any of this stuff home with me, you know? <laughs> so yeah, no, yeah. very powerful points. Wow. We got, okay. We got so much more to talk about. Holy crap. So we are folks, Miss Laura is going to be back. Drop your comments in below. Okay. Um, any questions? We'd love to answer them for you, but we are going to start doing regular shows together to kind of get into areas that other people don't. Yes. We're going to talk about, demons we're going to talk about dark where you heard her refer to reptilians things like this some of this i need her to help me get my understanding and i hope it'll come on to you miss laura do me a favor let everybody know and i know everything's going to be in the description below but tell everybody where they can find you and how to get hold of you you know the best way is going to the karmic path.com k-a-r-m-i-c-p-a-t-h.com and on my socials, et cetera. But I've got a lot of information on my website. The goal is to be helpful. The goal is to give people information. Um, I have a weekly blog that's been going on for over a year now. So it's full of information. So you can type in a keyword, a search word, et cetera, um, to see if you can get some answers. And by the way, whatever you do, make sure the information you're getting rings true for you and ask yourself why. So if you're reading one of my blogs and you don't like it, for example, you're not going to offend me. Maybe it's not right for you, but ask yourself, why did that not ring true for you? Nobody has 100% of all the answers all the time. Correct. I study all the time. I've studied biogeometry, biomagnetism. I, go, I can go on and on and on because there's so much information out there. The more we know, the more we know. And sometimes the information is what we learn is what didn't work, right? Exactly. And that's an opportunity right there. That's awesome. So thank you so much. I am so excited to reconnect with you again. We're going to have a blast. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have a blast. So everybody, you know you know the drill, the bangerang drill. All we're looking for, and I just say it a little different than Miss Laura, but I want you to understand. We want you to get grounded, Okay. We want you to get in a place where you can reclaim, magic is real, you can reclaim your personal magic in your soul, in your energy, so you can find your wings and you can fly. That's all we're trying to do. 
thus the bangerang principle. So with all that being said, take what you want, leave what you don't, but leave having experienced some peace, love, and life. Bangerang! This is Tarot with an Attitude, featuring your host, tarot consultant and spiritual medium, the Reverend Rob Lee. 